Guys, I've got a brand new SEX24 right here. Never been opened. And as soon as I open this up, we're gonna install the brand new Furtech brushless conversion system with a Tegu ESC. Yep, first run is gonna be brushless. Take a look. I've had this for probably two months. No kidding. Oh, so cute. <laughs> All right, we've got the batteries, some links, looks like some drive shaft pieces. And over here we have the largest part of the whole thing. Uh, let's see, that is gonna be the box. Oh, never mind. We got the transmitter. <laughs> the brushless kit comes with everything you need to put it right in. So this is a really neat little truck. This right here is going to be awesome in it. And this motor, when you look at the size of it, is huge. There is not going to be a power problem at all. Now we have the Tega ESC. Now it does come with the motor wires right here. Those will come off. This plugs right in. And it's got the uh, Bluetooth on it so I can tune it with the uh, phone. So, ah, uh, wow, this is going to be awesome. I'm really looking forward to this. Now, just to let you know, I am going to be changing the radios because there's no sense in really stacking everything on top to make all that work when I can put a much smaller receiver in there. I'll still be using the stock servo for now, but I'll, I'll be coming up with something for that. Um, I got to say, the uh, C10 here. It's actually a really neat. I mean, I've got this one, which is okay, but when I did the wideners on it, it really just, I don't know, did not work out like what I had hoped. Um, definitely needs a higher power steering servo on that one. The wider angles and all the wheel scrub and all that, not such a good thing. This right here, I'm not planning to do any of that, but this is going in. Shortly after I put that thing together, I decided it was time and I actually went on Amazon and got this .050 wrench just for these little guys because it's kind of needed. Look at the difference in motor size. This is going to be awesome. Oh man, I got a feeling this little, this little motor, the new Outrunner, will just annihilate anything in here if I'm not careful. That is going to be super strong. Making a little progress, pull the battery tray off. Uh, pull the receiver ESC out, servo staying in for now, and uh, now I gotta get get the transmission out. This is so cute. Look at that. Aww. With the gear cover off, we have more little tiny cute little gears. <laughs> now that spur gear right there comes off, and that goes in place of it. Once you get the motor off, you gotta remove the stock motor mount right here. That comes off, and then the new plate from Furatech goes right in place. Once you have the new motor mount in place, at this point we can reinstall the spur gear, secure that, and get onto the motor. With all that in place, and yes, this mount does feel rigid enough to hold mesh correctly, we could actually put all that right in. And using those bolts and washers, this should be a fairly easy job. So far it has been. When setting the pinion gear, I found this right here works pretty much perfectly. Get the uh, pinion gear flush with the outside of the shaft. If it's out a little bit further, it'll be just fine, but this right here seems to work perfectly. With the motor and everything mounted up, it looks awesome, and look at that. We can adjust for a much larger pinion gear. So if you want a little more wheel speed, you can get it. That's awesome. Okay, so I have looked at this thing quite a bit. The receiver, obviously a big six channel isn't needed here. I'm gonna get another three channel ordered and probably just strip it down to the board uh, there really isn't any need for all this. As far as the Tegu ESC, uh, the only place I can see is I can glue it into place right there. That'll allow the factory battery to slide underneath, come around, and plug into it. So, I mean, it is operational, and I'm going to go ahead and show you guys that real quick, and then I'm going to start the gluing process, and that'll be tomorrow before I get to mess with that. Okay, let's check out some of that operation here. That is really, really slow. Now you can tell when it goes from the uh, startup, like a sinusoidal, I believe is the proper term for it. You can tell when it goes from the startup into the drive. 
that's probably tunable that I haven't got to yet but it actually really really smooth now I'm looking forward to seeing this thing outside when I can do a little bit more with it but uh that is awesome now one thing for sure is that this motor is just not going to have any issues at all doing anything with this. I mean, it shouldn't. Brushless Outrunner. Yeah. But I definitely got to do something with that gigantic receiver, though. <laughs> all right, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and get everything anchored and hopefully get some things kind of finalized, except for that receiver, and actually give this thing a real drive. Look up into here. It barely, barely fits. The receiver is actually a little bit too tall. It's kind of making it push a little bit down on it. Uh, but hopefully when I get the three channel, it'll be a little bit skinnier and I can decase it and make that fit without issue. But uh, nice. Now also, I haven't got any extensions for the lights, so the lights aren't going to work. Um, I'll probably do that when I get the other receiver for it, get this thing toned down just a little bit. But... Everything seems to fit in nice. I mean, it actually got clearance. I could probably fit the uh, Helio 600 milliamp battery in there as well. But, you know what? It's time to power this thing up. Time to uh, actually go put it on the rocks and give this body some scratches. <laughs> Hold on, before we go out, you guys gotta see this. When you throttle this thing up, watch this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to get real shocks from this one, aren't I? That's awesome. Okay, let's get this going. Now, the course that I have here is set for one tent stuff. But, you know, may as well give this a shot here. The control is awesome. All right. It seems stable. Now... I've been looking for a reason to really start messing with the 124th. I was hoping the little bouncer would do it. You know, just looking for a reason. Uh, this could actually be it. I'm not sure yet. I mean, do they make U-joint axles so you can get sharp turning? Do they have a dig unit yet? I'm really having to get in close on this. <laughs> this is such a tiny little truck. I know when the uh, these came out, everybody was like, oh my God, these are the ones you got to get. These are the ones. Like, well, all right. Now it's definitely got... Now with this ESC... Oh no! <laughs> now, knowing that I can, I was going to say something. I forget. Oh, yeah, I can do throttle curves and all that stuff with this ESC, which is pretty nice. And it's all set up by phone, Bluetooth, and everything. Wow, if I get up this, this will be impressive. But, uh, yeah, I'm definitely, oh my God, look at that giant reptile. Hey, dude, this truck is barely bigger than you are. Let's see what we got here. You can sneak up on this world record alligator. <laughs> oh, I don't think I'm going to be able to get that. Oh, so close. Nope, not going to be able to get that. No! Let's go ahead and try another climb since now we're on this side. Tell you what, this versus the uh, deadbolt, this is way better already. I think even in box stock form, it would be better than the deadbolt. Look at this. Wow, definitely got some punch. 
Oh, wow. Ah, look at this. Look at this. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Let's see what we got here. This is not too bad of a skill spot for this little guy. Not bad, not bad. I really like this power system with the stock stuff, like with the bouncer, because it still has the uh, stock motor. You know, I'm always throttling up, throttling down, you know, trying to make it go, but this right here, I like this. That prehistoric monster. <laughs> a lamb was barely inches away from him. We're on a monster hunt. Monster hunt. He doesn't know it. He doesn't know. We'll ease up on him. Oh, he ran off. The massive monster C10. Gonna get the. Oh, never mind. Well, guys, the conversion went in smooth. Everything went in smooth. The motor is insanely strong. And it's got the punch this thing never had. My bouncer doesn't have this punch at all. And I love the fact that I can actually bump up the pinion size. Because I'm going to find bigger pinions for this. I want to get a little bit more speed out of this thing. Because I do feel that with the sinusoidal startup, the way it was starting up, I feel it will pull it just fine. So, yeah, I'm happy with this. This worked out really good. Definitely got to get that other, rec uh, other receiver, the three channel. Make that where that sits down there like it's supposed to. But uh, I see why everybody likes this particular model. It really, really done good. Way better than with the uh, that deadbolt. Never liked that deadbolt. I was happy to make that thing into a bouncer. But uh, that is really cool. That is, that's pretty awesome. So as far as mods go, as far as other mods go, I'm just thinking maybe the brass inserts into the stock wheels, maybe the brass knuckles, you know, just simple little bolt on things like that. Nothing major. But now I know the motor's got enough torque to pull it easily. So uh, and maybe if I get a little bit of extra weight, it'll help these tires conform a little bit as well. But anyway, guys, uh, in that description, we'll put a link to Furtech, the parts and pieces that are on here, the truck itself, and maybe some parts and pieces that I'm looking to, looking to modify with. So make sure you check that out um, in the link um, where applicable. There are um, affiliate links, Amain, eBay, Amazon, and Horizon. Make sure you check those out. For everybody who's in the affiliate links, thank you guys so much. It means a lot. It really does. And uh, Furtech, he's on it. Let me tell you. So guys, check that description. Use those links. Make sure you're subscribed. And thank you all for watching. Guys, if you like what you see, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. And ring that bell. So, in the description, there's a link to become a channel member. If you want to become a channel member, it's a very simple $2, $5, $10, or if you really got some money, $25 a month. It's a simple way to support the channel. So, get that, and I am doing monthly giveaways for members only, so you might want to consider it. So, guys, here's those links. Make sure you're subscribed. Thank you all for watching.